Music Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Manish Jain or AKA Mr. Jain and you're watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number 14 and it's the first one for the year of 2024. This is the January wrap up. And as always, we got four things we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover the monthly registration numbers. We're gonna talk about any recent EV news, the car spotting, and the deep dive. So surprisingly, this is going to be a very Tata-centric episode because a lot of the information is around the Tatas as far as number one sales, uh, recent EV news with their launch of the Punch EV, EV car spotting. I happen to see the new Punch.EV on the road uh, within like a couple days of the launch and the deep dive into their new four-tier architecture for their new platform. So why don't we just dive right into it and get into the monthly registration figures for January, 2024. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the EV sales data for January, 2024 in India. This of course is showing you the last six months so you can kind of get a sense of the trends that are happening. Uh, and before we get to the data, I wanna just uh, kind of give a shout out to where the data comes from. I don't want people to think that I'm stealing it. So we've got multiple sources of the data, I must say. So at number one, we've got EV Reporter. They have a very good website, a lot of data. They've even got a new data portal where you get to see a lot of the data, which is really, really good on the EV side. So EV Reporter, then of course, your typical Vahan, Fada, the OEMs. And then every so often I do find some of the data on Twitter or X. And so that's kind of where all the data comes into and I kind of aggregate it and then put it into this nice heat map. And that is provided by a company called Data Wrapper, which is, I think, is a is a Dutch company. Or sorry, I think it's a German company, if I'm not mistaken. So they have kind of you know been able to create this nice little heat map. You just put the data in and it comes out. So, anyways, let's kind of jump in. And you know, we've got Tata Motors at around 5,500 units, MG Motors 1100, MM at 740, Hyundai, BYD down the list. BMW at 145, Mercedes at 56. I know I'm just reading them. You know, you can probably see this yourself. I wish I could add some color to this, but you know, it's the same story again and again. Tata Motors, MG, uh, because their price points are fairly attractive. They take a lion's share of the sales in India. And then everyone else comes in really next to nothing. And if you see here for the last three months, you know, this data for Audi, Porsche, Jaguar has been empty. And the truth is because I've not been able to really get any reliable information, but suffice to say that these, all three of these manufacturers combined probably are selling no more than 30 cars in total. That is 30 cars in total. So it's not really much. It's not really gonna sway the numbers any, you know, any direction. So that's kind of where we are with, you know, the bottom end of this. And then, you know, let's kind of get back into Volvo is at 49 Kia and actually surprisingly we got a huge drop if you look at it for you know Citroen uh, they've got quite a few they've got uh, you know the E3C and that is the one that's used by a lot of cab aggregators and surprising they uh, don't seem to be doing as well as they used to uh, not sure what why that is but that's a wrap on the numbers for January 2024 uh, for four-wheel EV sales in India. Number two on the docket is EV News. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of Tata news. They have launched their new tatapunch.ev and their active.ev platform. So we will talk about the platform a little bit later, but let's really talk about, you know, the EV that we're looking at here. This is the new Punch EV. It looks very nice in the front. They've done a pretty good job, I must say. Uh, you know, what's crazy actually is, you know, if you go to the website, uh, you know, if you look at this graphic, it looks like there's only like, you know, however many variants there are here, about uh, eight variants. But if you actually go to the website, there are over 20 variants for the punch.ev. And as you can see here, it starts, you know, uh, at around 11 lakhs and it goes up to 14.5. I believe there's uh, there's some that are a little bit more than that when you add in a bunch of other things, such as a fast charger and you've got a sunroof when you add all these different things in and that's how you get uh, you know these different variants but collectively there are there are these 10 and then you've got a bunch of others when you add in this uh, sunroof and then the AC fast charger 
Uh, but, you know, I have to say that, you know, going back to this image, let's just go back to this image, you know, it looks really nice. It's got that, uh, you know, front bar and it looks very nice. It looks very similar to the Tata Nexon. And of course, the, the charger is in the very front, so you got to kind of open up the door. Uh, but, uh, you know, the back looks really good. I think they've done a really good job. I'm sure this will do very well as far as sales are concerned. Great car if you want it for the city and kind of getting around. Uh, as far as, you know, uh, is it great for like going between cities and highway driving? I'm not really sure yet, but having said that, you, you never know, this could come out with, you know, a five-star rating, which I wouldn't be surprised if it does because Tata's are really focused on, uh, you know, making sure their end cap and B cap ratings are five stars. So if it does, it's good, but I would say it's probably more like a city car more than anything else, you know? And then, you know, here is a little bit about some of the stuff that is in there. You know, you get a lot of digital equipment in there. You've got uh, two screens, talks about, I mean, let's be realistic though. You know, it talks about an illuminated logo uh, on, on the steering wheel. I mean, that seems kind of gimmicky to me, but well, maybe that's what the audience wants. Then you've got a lot of other things. It's got the wireless Android Auto and uh, CarPlay. Can I tell you, my Kia EV6 does not have wireless CarPlay. It's got wired CarPlay and that doesn't even work. I've got a lot of a lot of issues with that, but this one has that. Uh, it's got a lot of connected features because of its, you know, 5G capability, which we will talk about later. And then, you know, a little bit, it talks about here, talking a little bit about the overall architecture right here. It's, you know, you know, it, 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 it's all uh, marketing at this point. It's the first product from the Tata Motors to be based on an all new made in India pure EV architecture, which is true. It is the very first one. Uh, the Nexon.EV platform is taking an ICE platform and turning it into an EV platform. But this one is really from the ground up. This is the second platform that they have. And then the third platform they're going to come out with, that is their premium platform that is actually coming, I believe, from JLR. So that's kind of uh, the punch.ev news roundup. And then, of course, the other piece of news is this Rolls-Royce Spectre. This is about a million dollars on the road. And, of course, that's the headlining number. When this thing was rolled out, everybody talked about it. They kept on going on and on and how it was, you know, cost almost 7.5 crore, blah, blah, blah. It's got a pretty big battery pack, you know, 102 kilowatt hour battery pack, you know, fairly decent range at 530 kilometers. And obviously it's got a shit ton of torque at 900 newton meters of torque. And this blue one here is already sold. And actually, you know, obviously since it's Rolls Royce, they're not going to just call it blue. This one is actually called Salamanca blue. And that's the one that got sold. And that's the one that is here now. Now that I look at it, though, this one seems a little bit darker than the one that is pictured up here. So now I'm a little suspicious. Maybe it's the lighting or maybe I picked up the wrong blue from the Rolls Royce website. But that was a big launch uh, in January was, you know, the Rolls Royce Spectre. And, you know, what was amazing is this was launched at right around the same time as, as it was launched uh, in the U.S., so I think there's maybe a one or two week gap between it being launched in the U.S. and it being launched here in India. And how many do you do we expect to sell? I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe five or six of these get sold. I can't imagine too many. And uh, knowing that there is a certain individual in Bombay that has a love for Rolls Royces, I would not be surprised if they get, you know, one of the first batches of these into the garage. So that's the news for January 2024. Next up is EV car spotting. And this one was pretty surprising. You know, I just mentioned that the Punch.EV was just launched, uh, you know, in January. And the Mumbai Marathon that is actually sponsored by TCS uh, took place on, I think, January 17th. And sure enough, the pace car uh, as you can see, these are the elite runners back here somewhere. Uh, but, the, but the vehicle that they had that was kind of setting the pace was, of course, a Tata Punch.EV. And, of course, looked pretty nice on the road. You know, of course, what I showed you before was, you know, a press photo. But this actually looked quite nice on the road. 
Uh, even on the uh, on the rear, the taillights look really good. And uh, I can tell you that people probably, if you just look at this car very quickly from the front, you may mistake it for the Nexon dot Nexon.EV. So they're very similar. They're trying to go for a very similar design language. Of course, some people may say there should be some differentiation between the Nexon and the Punch, uh, but I have a feeling these guys are trying to go for the typical German, you know, ideology, which is what I call small, medium, large, whether it's a 357 or an E, C, or S class. You know, they're all kind of, you know, smaller variations of it, or whether it's a 357 series or an Audi A4, A6, A8. They all look kind of similar and just some minor tweaks. Maybe that's what they're trying to do here. But overall, looks good on the road. And of course, you know, these guys are just, you know, <sighs> running their hearts out, man. Anyways, that's a wrap on the EV car spotting for January. All right, we are on the home stretch. We are at section four, which is the deep dive. And as I mentioned, this is around the Tata Active uh, that is acti.ev platform, very ha, trickery in the way that they've spelled it and somehow have been able to shove .ev in there. Anyways, so there is, of course, uh, it's an acronym and here we've got a mouthful, but this is what the acronym stands for. It is the Advanced Connected Tech Intelligent Electric Vehicle Architecture. Wow. I got to tell you, after three beers, if I had to, if I could say that correctly, I deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. Anyways, as I had mentioned, it's India's, uh, or it's Tata's first Made in India Pure electric platform. Uh, it's different from the EMA, the Electrified Modular Architecture, which is from JLR. That is, of course, for their new upcoming high-end uh, car called the Tata Avinia. So this is more low cost, you know, kind of made in India, probably made in Pune, if I wouldn't be, uh, if I wouldn't be mistaken. You know, so that is what, active stands for and you know when you kind of go through the literature you know they've kind of talked about it being a four-tier architecture or what they call four layers so at the base you've got the powertrain so let me just kind of start marking this up so here you've got the powertrain uh, let me just change this so we can see it as i mark this up all right so here you got layer one is the powertrain then you got layer two you got the chassis Layer three is the electrical architecture. And then layer four is the cloud. That is all 5G, that's all connected. That's all, you know, I'm sure at some point they're gonna throw in the words AI. But that's what they're kind of talking about from what their architecture is. And what's interesting is we can now take a look at them and kind of dive into each one. So here, when you look at layer one, you know, they talk about it being a, layer one is the, the powertrain. So that is kind of like, you know, do you have a single motor setup? Do you have a dual motor setup? Do you have it in the front or the back? And here you've actually got all three. You know, you've got the front wheel drive motor, you've got the rear wheel drive motor here, and then you've got two. So you've got all wheel drive, dual motor setups, and anywhere you've got from, you know, 300 to 600 kilometer range, uh, and onboard it can support you know, 7.2 kilowatt to 11 kilowatt onboard fast charging, which is great. And then DC fast charging happens at 150 kilowatts, which is not bad, you know, for a low price vehicle to have that kind of technology is great. Uh, of course, the idea is, you know, with technology, we're gonna get more and more of these features in all of the products all the way down. So hopefully at some point, you know, 300 or even 400 kilowatt charging is like a no brainer for any product out there. So that's layer one. So it's kind of like a Big Mac. So now we go to the next layer. And uh, you know, see here we just talked about it. Um, and then layer two is the chassis. So it's got multiple body styles. And you know, what they're talking about is, you know, this is a very modular platform. So they're starting with the Punch EV, and then they're gonna follow it up with the Curve.EV, then the Sierra.EV, and then the Harrier.EV, and then maybe some others after that. But basically, They've got one platform and they can just put these different, uh, you know, body on top of it, uh, different features and, you know, kind of share the cost between all of these different uh, ranges of models that they have, you know. So here's a little bit more talks about it. Of course, they want to make sure that they, you know, have the global end cap and then the bottom end cap safety protocols in, in place, which I'm sure they will. And so they really are you know, kind of thinking from the ground up and focusing on delivering a quality product for India. 
And here they got some more stuff. Here we talked about the B cap and G cap uh, five star ratings. Number three talks about its electrical architecture. So, you know, it's not electrical in the way that you would think. You know, it's more about, you know, what are some of the features that are there? Uh, you know, it talks about the ADAS level two. Then it talks about the electrical as far as vehicle to vehicle. So you can actually use this as one massive power bank and charge something else. So you can charge another vehicle or you can actually charge, uh, you know, devices. So there's actually gonna be electrical plug point that you can plug in and you can, you know, plug in your coffee maker, plug in your cell phone charger, which would be kind of weird, but uh, funny story. When I was getting my Kia EV6, uh, uh, battery charger battery wall charger installed at home uh, you know they had run the cable the electrical cable but they didn't have a way to actually drill they, they the, the drill needed an electrical connection so of course i whipped out my vehicle to load adapter on my kia plugged it in and the dude that was doing the drilling was like what the is going on here so i just plugged it in for him and he looked at me like in astonishment going what is going on but that is vehicle to load and that's what this product can do, you know, can support vehicle to load, vehicle to vehicle, uh, and supports 5G. Uh, it's got uh, level two ADAS. Uh, again, I think this electrical architecture, they're kind of blurring. Really, a lot of these features they should have really talked about in the next piece, layer four, but maybe that's the reason they're trying to say the things at layer four kind of map into layer three. And here we go, so here we go bi-directional charging capabilities. And then last but not least is the layer four, which is their cloud architecture. And of course, you know, I'm just trying to read here. Do they even say AI? Oh my gosh, they don't. Very surprising. But basically you're gonna get over the air updates or what they call OTA updates. Just like when you get a new iPhone or a new Android update, it just kind of happens over the air via Wi-Fi. So the same thing here, this is actually gonna have a 5G SIM most likely connected to, you know, a Vodafone or a, you know, geo network. And it's constantly communicating to the network and trying to make sure that it's got the right updates. And then that's where a lot of the other features are gonna happen where you can actually track the car when you're not in the car. So a lot of these features are there because of this layer four cloud architecture. Uh, I was hoping to get a little bit more detail about you know the overall platform like battery packs things like that but i wasn't able to really find much on that i'm hoping to dig into it and get more information but if i'm not mistaken i'm sure some of those battery packs hopefully are now coming from uh tato uh tata auto comp which is their sister concern uh but who knows they may be buying them from lg or someone else in the meantime till they kind of figure out their chemistry but that is a wrap, people, for episode 14 of Electric Avenue. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you next month. Take care. Oh, no, we're going to rock down to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take